Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brigadier General Laura Cleveland, the Adjutant General for Colorado. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Command Sergeant Major Bill Woods, the Command Senior Enlisted Leader to the Adjutant General. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Command Sergeant Major Edward Macias. I'm the Senior Enlisted Leader for the Colorado Army National Guard. Hello, I'm CW5 Drew Zanoff, the Command Chief Warrant Officer for the State of Colorado. And I am Colonel Paul Morton. I am the Chief of Aerospace Medicine on the air side. Hey, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this is our second Facebook Live Town Hall about the COVID-19 vaccine. And we're here to answer your questions about the COVID-19 uh, vaccine which contributes, contributes to our war on this deadly disease. Our priority continues to be to protect our service members, our civilians and families, so that we can stop the spread of COVID-19. We now wanna give you an update on the vaccine distribution within our department. As of February 17th, nearly 1,500 first doses have been administered to Colorado Guard members. That's nearly one third of our force with another 200 members having already received their second dose. We're making great progress here. Our highly trained military medical personnel have been hard at work administering the vaccine. And I wanna personally thank them for their tireless efforts. They continue to carry out an unprecedented effort to administer every dose that we have to our force. We will continue to follow our phase distribution plan to protect our people from COVID-19. This phase approach to the vaccine is gonna take some time. We're getting to the end of phase one where we've been vaccinating our mission essential military service members and civilians who are most, most at risk in getting this deadly disease. I encourage our DMVA employees, our volunteers and families to get vaccinated as soon as you can to help protect each other. Stay connected through your county public health websites and your medical providers to learn where you and when you can get the vaccine. I'm gonna pass this off to Sergeant Major Macias. Thanks, ma'am. I believe this vaccine is both safe and effective. I've received the vaccine in order to keep my family and friends safe and to maintain my readiness. I received my first dosage of vaccine uh, a while ago and I was scheduled to get my second one yesterday and I got that one, so I am complete now. As the vaccine becomes available to you, I encourage that you take the opportunity to get it. Until everyone is vaccinated, we should all continue to follow the public health orders, including wearing the mask, washing your hands, and practicing social distancing. It is up to each of us to do our part and lead the way. I'll now turn it over to uh, Chief Zanoff. So we wanna answer some questions that you've submitted. And the first question is gonna go to Chief Zanoff. Chief? So first question is, will immediate family members of service members get access to the vaccine? And the answer is yes. As long as the dependents of the Colorado Guard are enrolled in TRICARE or TRICARE Select, they'll be able to receive the vaccine through the vaccine distribution plan. Next question is covered by Colonel Morton. Question number two, are you carrying the virus or contagious to your family members if you are the only one getting the vaccine at this point? Do we need to stay away from contact with children or family and for how long? Those are good questions. The vaccines cannot and do not cause COVID. The vaccine actually results in your body producing an antibody response through B cells, T cells, et cetera, to protect you from COVID. You don't actually contract COVID. And as a result of that, you will actually be providing protection for you, your family and your community by getting the vaccine. Next question. All right, thank you, sir. I got the next question. Question number three, how do we know what tier the National Guard is currently releasing the vaccine to? Okay, we have a snapshot of the chart here. I know it's a little hard to read, but uh, 
We are in phase one of the Colorado National Guard vaccine distribution plan. Our mission essential military service members and civilians are the priority during this phase. All right, I'm gonna turn it back over to the tag for question number four. Thank you, Sergeant Major. So the next question is, is it mandatory for service members going overseas in the fall? The vaccine is voluntary. It may be reasonable to assume that countries may institute a policy to mandate vaccination uh, for entry into their countries, but there are currently no Department of Defense mandates. Chief Zanoff. Thank you, ma'am. Question number five, Title 32, it was mentioned as an option, but what if their unit is mobilized on Title 10? So like General Clellan said, it is voluntary for all military service members, even on Title 10 or Title 32, it doesn't matter the status. And I'm followed by Sergeant Major Woods with question number six. Uh, does the vaccine cause side effects? Uh, more than 80% uh, of the people that have been vaccinated have very mild side effects. Uh, most commonly a sore arm, uh, that's kind of what I had. Uh, muscle aches, headache, fever, uh, by far, the majority of side effects are considered to be mild to moderate and do not require any medical care. Uh, our medical providers recommend that uh, to take Tylenol or ibuprofen, rest, drink plenty of fluids, and typically the symptoms will resolve in about 24 to 48 hours. And uh, General Clellan, you're up next. Hey, I appreciate everyone, everyone joining us today and sending your questions in. Uh, we do have a, a time for a few more questions from our Facebook viewers. So I'm going to pause and see if there are more questions. All right, ma'am, the first question is, we talked about our dependents being able to get the vaccine. What website can I sign my dependents up on in order to receive the vaccine? I can take that question. Uh, same as uh, similar to the question I had first, uh, dependents can get the vaccine and they can register on Milk Connect to get scheduled for the vaccine. Next question. What type of vaccine would I be receiving through the Colorado National Guard? So I can take that, that question. We are receiving Moderna and that is the vaccine that we are distributing. All right. And the third question that I have right here is, has anyone from the studies done on this vaccine died from a result of COVID after receiving the vaccine? All right. That's definitely my wheelhouse. Um, so approximately 75,000 people enrolled in the studies actually got the vaccine. And that's including the Moderna, uh, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and Novavax. So of the 75,000 that got the vaccine, those who got COVID, the number of people who actually have died as a result of COVID is zero. So no one has died in those studies. And now we're talking October, November, it started. So now we're you know, several, five months, almost six months into this at this point. On top of that, I think a really key number on top of that for everyone to, to know is the number of people who've been hospitalized out of those 75,000. And, and, and technically the answer is zero. There was one person that was hospitalized, but it was hospitalized before the 28-day the point getting the second, second vaccine. So overall, it's a, it's a goose eggs. Um, the vaccine does work. And if you look at about the 10,000 or so from two of those studies that were, were enrolled in South Africa uh, who actually got the variant disease, it's the same, uh, zero and zero. Um, and if you took 75,000 people in a normal population and said, okay, you all have COVID and didn't, didn't have the vaccine, uh, you would expect about 500 of those people to be hospitalized. So zero versus 500, clearly this vaccine works. It's an impressive, uh, feet of science that they were able to do this and make it as effective as it is. 
to please go out and get your vaccines. All right. Another question. How will the National Guard be tracking who received the vaccine in the force? So I can answer that. Our medical providers, as they're given the vaccine, are annotating it in the, uh, the air and the Army medical systems on the military side. And then we are also annotating that in the Colorado system of record as well for the state. So it's being documented twice. Plus you get a card to take with you to give to your medical provider if you would like, or to keep on you and give them a copy of it. Um, Colonel Morton, do you want to add anything to that? No, ma'am. I mean, I think you're right on. And I, the only other thing I would add is Obviously, it's in your medical record, uh, vaccination, vaccination record that we do on the Air and Army side. Uh, that's the predominant place we would find that. If you ever needed a record of it, it'd be really easy to print out that summary of your vaccines. All right. So if at this time, if we are not on TRICARE or TRICARE Reserve Select, but our Title 32 and Title 5 techs, can our immediate family members still be signed up for the vaccine right now? Colonel Morton, can you answer that question? So, the bottom line is we're gonna, if, if we have vaccine and it's there in the vial and we, we wanna give it before it expires, we wanna find people to give it to and we wanna make sure people get it. Now, I, I might need some help from my, com, some of my comrades here in terms of the actual, how Title 32 dependents work in terms of TRICARE and TRICARE uh, Reserve Select. Are they actually enrolled? And I, I apologize, I'm not completely clear on that. Um, in the community, I believe their Blue Cross Blue Shield, in some cases, or another private insurer, in my mind, um, the answer would be we always vaccinate when, when possible and we have people in front of us. Um, but I want to make sure I'm not overstepping my bounds on this and make sure that I've, I've got the correct information in terms of Title 32 independent insurance status. Anybody else jump in with me? We can always get back on this and get the answer out as well and just make sure we have it correct. Yes, we can do a follow-up on that. As of right now, though, it is only TRICARE and TRICARE Reserve Select. In the future, of course, there's a possibility to change just as it goes on. Well, I can answer a little bit about the technician side since I'm a retired tech. Um, my wife and I have Kaiser as our primary because I'm a retired tech. And then I also have uh, TRICARE as my secondary insurance. But since um, for her, for my wife to get uh, set up on this, we had her, uh, Kaiser had a website and she signed up through Kaiser and then through her doctor's office uh, was Optum. So she signed up there. So she's currently on two list waiting and she'll be part of the next phase. So on the technician side, you would have to go through your primary care physician. Got it. Thank you, Sergeant Major, Lieutenant Lee for the backup. Perfect, thank you. And this one is for medical. Has there been any studies done on how long it would take after the second shot to have immunity? Also, does this mean we'll need additional vaccines in the future? Yep, That's, uh, those are great questions. So each of the studies for each of the vaccines had their own individual timelines in terms of endpoints. Uh, most of them were looking at the time frame 14 to 28 days after the second vaccine in terms of effectiveness and prevention of the primary endpoint, which is COVID itself, the infection or prevention of death or hospitalization or severe illness. Uh, however, we've noted that there's significant 
protection that happens even after the first dose. Uh, it may be as soon as 10 to 12 days, you may start ready getting some of your body's immune response ramped up. And fever is a normal response to getting a, a vaccine. It means your body's ramping up this response. The B cells, the T cells, they're starting to work just like they would in any other infection. And they're ramping up and giving you protection for future COVID exposure. So yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as future vaccination, that, it, that's a great question. I'm not sure anyone really knows the answer to that. I can tell you that listening to a lot of smart people, doctors, scientists in the public health community, uh, we all believe that this is going to require some sort of vaccine again in the future, whether it's one year, two years, maybe even three years. I think some people's gut feels it's gonna be longer, but with the variants and depending on how quickly they come, it is possible that it could be two years or one year for a repeat vaccination where they have to go in and, and, and modify the current vaccination. Now, it's a little like flu in that we have a different dose or a different uh, phenotype, sorry, a different type of, vac uh, for lack of a better way of explaining it in English terms, it's, it's just a different design of the vaccine itself. And, and we, that would be the same case with the COVID vaccine as well, where you want to, we didn't have to start over. It would most likely be just altering what we currently have in place that already has a pretty good, pretty good track record. I mean, like no one's ever had, no one's, we've never had any really serious complications from the safety profile has been excellent. Basically, we have not, no one's died of the vaccine as a result of the vaccine. Um, and the, this, the amount of serious complications has been very low. So we have a great safety track record with this. We would just revamp what we currently have and put out a vaccine uh, that is appropriate for the situation at hand. Okay, and that was the last question from the field. Great, thanks, Lieutenant Lee, Colonel Morton. Sergeants Major Macias, Sergeant Major Woods, um, and uh, Chief Zanoff, thank you for joining us today and being part of this. I want to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, thanks for your questions. I look forward to seeing you at our next Facebook Live on March 6th. If we didn't answer your question, please let uh, Lieutenant Lee know, let Public Affairs know, and our medical team will answer your question as soon as possible. Uh, please stay ready, stay safe. Uh, as the Colorado National Guard, uh, you know that we always have to be ready and we always have to be there. Thank you.